Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, kind of get rid of that white paper behind your colored pencil designs. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just color an image on cardstock and uh, then we're going to put in a watercolor background. So I've just printed these off from my inkjet printer and these are from the um, the fancy flower set from Lindsay Stamp Stuff, but I do have a ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Woo! 26 seconds in, I can't talk straight. Uh, <laughs> I do have a tutorial on how to draw an orchid. I will put a, t a couple of them actually, I'll put links below the video in the description in case you want to do that. So let's uh, begin by using our uh, regular colored pencils and uh, let's start off with, um, this is a lovely, I think this might be called orchid, no it's called mulberry, but it's kind of an orchidy color, if ever an orchidy color there was. Uh, I'm gonna put this right here in the shadows. I have the Wizard of Oz song stuck in my head now. Oh my gosh, I watched uh, the season finale of Once Upon a Time, finally. My girls and I watched that and it's one of the few shows that uh, that we agree on. And um, and I did not like the season finale. I don't want to say anything about it because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, but I was not impressed. So I'm not waiting on bated breath for the show to return. It's one of my favorites though, so don't you hate it when the producers of a TV show won't do what you want them to? Isn't that aggravating? So aggravating. And I'll put some little shadows in here. Yeah, you could do markers underneath your colored pencils. See, I don't like uh, typically working on white paper. That white background is like white walls in your house. I don't like it. So, um, so like when you use markers underneath, it kind of helps take away that white. Um, and uh, using watercolors is a great way to do that as well. So you're probably thinking, Lindsay, I know you have an inkjet printer. Your your ink is just going to smear if you use watercolors. Well, the cool thing about our colored pencils is that they're wax based and they're going to lock in all that color. So um, all that ink. So you just want to make sure you do get right out to the edge and go over those lines um, and you won't have anything to worry about when it comes time to the watercolor which is nice. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these little images that I've been coloring. I had done some um, some colored pencil uh, workshops for the Society of Decorative Painters um, a couple years ago and I had printed off a bunch of these extra ones, extra images in case um, I like to turn my work too as I'm going so that I can uh, reach everything easier and I like my strokes to go in line with whatever I'm coloring in the shape of whatever I'm coloring. Um, so anyways I was doing these workshops and I was worried that maybe I didn't have enough content planned so I thought well I'll bring these practice sheets and then they can work on that too if they finish up early. Well that didn't happen so I ended up having, uh, I did give them out to the students that came but I did have a few left over and when somebody had asked me if I could show them how to color an orchid and colored pencils after my um, oil painting tutorial last week I thought well there look at that that's a uh, that's serendipity right there because that's just I just happened to come across these uh, these pages all right now I'm gonna grab I want to add a little bit of this into my shadow this is oh yeah that's a mulberry we already used that but I feel like I need to deepen it up here in the shadow areas there we go and you start to build that nice color up it's so pretty I really enjoy working on colored paper with my colored pencils that's my favorite uh, but when I'm working on white I feel like I like to have a little extra punch either with uh, some watercolor in the background or um, or using my color dusters and ink or using markers underneath there's something just to give it a little va 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 voom or a little ooh la la in my, in my work there we go we're starting to get some color Wicked good. Wicked good color. <laughs> Local color. There we go. And now we're gonna take some, we'll take some white. I'm just seeing if there's any sneaky little colored pencils hiding under my watercolor palette that I planned on using. Um, grab some white here and I am gonna use this as my blender and also to fill in and lighten and lock in some of that color. Color. Color lover. See, you can blend that right out. So nice. This uh, I've had this pencil for a long time, and I shared this this, this uh, tip on my Ask a Crafter, and I shared that my last uh, coloring video. But I want to say it again because I've had to use this like three times today. Um, if your lead breaks in your colored pencils, you can microwave them for 10 seconds. No, don't do 15. Let me show you what happens when you do 15 because I did 15 on one of these by mistake and it bubbled my paint. Look at that. I don't know if you can see right there. The paint's all bubbly. Um, 15 seconds is too long. 10 is perfect <laughs> on high on your microwave. So 
it didn't hurt the it didn't hurt the pencil it worked fine but um, but it did bubble the paint so what I do is I actually pop it in and set it on the uh, one at a time and I think it works really well because microwaves cook from the inside out um, you just put it on your tray and um, microwave it I, I usually just hit the 30 second button and let it count down 10 seconds let it count down to 20 seconds there so it's only been in there for 10 and then I stop it and I let it cool off and then I sharpen it and it works it just works so well I haven't had any wobbly leads in there. But if you're in the middle of a project and your lead breaks and you don't have time to do that, or you don't have a microwave, you can do a little bit of a super glue, super glue that lead back in. That was a tip from another one of my viewers who uh, I broke a lead right on camera one day and he left a comment and that was also super, super useful. So, you know, maybe if you take your pencils with you to class or out and about, you might just put like one of those little, um, you know, one time use super glue tubes in your, they're all one time use because once you use it once you glue the cap on it seems like, um, pop one of those in your craft bag and you're good to go. I'm going right over with the white because I want to make sure I really got those, uh, that inkjet ink sit, like locked away so it's not going to bleed on me when I go ahead to color. And then I like to go back in with, with my uh, darker color and, um, yeah, I could sharpen this if I wanted a little more detail. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna. And I'm just gonna throw in a, just a little bit more depth of color in the shadows. And once you get that, in, and this is smooth cardstock. This is like inexpensive Georgia Pacific cardstock. It's smooth, so it doesn't take very long to fill in the tooth. So sometimes it is helpful to use markers underneath because um, your tooth will get full of the pencil and you can't add any more on there. But Something small like this, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. It can speed up your work time, though. Um, I just did the daffodil tutorial, um, how to color the daffodils with markers and colored pencils. So I think it does speed things up a little bit sometimes, but, you know, it's up to you. Personal preference. Works works well both ways. All right, now for the, um, for the middle of my flower, I'm going to do some yellow. Right in here and a little bit up here and a little bit over here now i'm going to do some of this um what's this this is raspberry right in back here and on the hood here over the iris i mean uh, orchid trees get my flowers straight i'm starting to get cold feet on my whole gardening idea i've uh it's getting real close to memorial day and i have no dirt and I have no uh, no raised beds yet, and I'm afraid that I'm going to get in over my head and make this huge mess that is going to be on my front lawn for all my neighbors to see and complain about. <laughs> well, I don't have complaining neighbors, but I would complain if somebody, like, you know, put up a poor garden in their front yard. I don't know. I'm starting to get nervous. I don't know if I can hack it. I think it's kind of, I'm actually kind of afraid of the garden. I don't know why. I don't have a skill. I don't have uh, a natural ability. Which I should take my own advice that I give everybody for art and just go for it, just do it. But uh, I'm a big chicken. All right, I'm gonna take that. Uh, this is lavender. I, we used that before. I'm gonna go right over the uh, edge of this flower here. Give a little bit of white too. It needs a little bit of a highlight. So when I first put this pencil for a long time, when I first broke the lead. I kept sharpening it, it wouldn't keep, lead kept falling out. I sharpened the other end, that worked all right for a little while. I was so glad when I uh, found out about that microwaving trick because that saves the day. There we go. All right, and on the um, stem, I'm gonna do a little yellow, a little bit of lime peel. And you know what, if you have a different brand than Prismacolors, use what you have. That's fine. And then this darker olive green. I think it's olive, yep. Sometimes I find it hard to read those uh, gold when they have the color names in gold. I find that hard to read. All right, so there's that. I'm thinking, was I going to use, did I use both? I don't know if I used both those colors. Let me get a little crimson in there. I was thinking that that uh, raspberry wasn't quite bright enough. I'll put that in there too. For good measure. Wicked. <laughs> Wicked. All right. I blow all those crumbs away and then I want to put in a little bit of background with my watercolors and um, I don't when you're working on cardstock you have to be very careful because um, the paper's really not not designed to handle too much moisture so I'm not gonna pre-wet the paper what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just um, let me move this out of the way I'm gonna get my little palette thing out so that I can 
show you how I mix up my color here. I think we can stay pretty well zoomed up. Yeah, we can. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get some of this cad yellow, which is a nice, um, warm, sunny yellow. You can use whatever color you want. I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna use mauve, and I'm gonna use some sap green. And I'm gonna get all these colors prepared on my palette. Oops, be nice if you could see that, wouldn't it? That'd be wicked awesome if you could see that color. <laughs> There we go. All right, so we got those three colors there. And then I cleaned off my brush and I'm gonna make a frame um, around the flower with yellow. And you gotta work pretty quickly because it is gonna absorb into the paper. And I kind of want a, uh, more color than that. Um, I want a very organic edged looking frame. I don't want it really crisp. You could, you can do it totally crisp if you want to. I just want it to be kind of, um, kind of a rough edge to it. You don't have to worry about going, oh, you can go right up to it. You don't have to worry if you go over a little bit because that wax and the pencil is going to resist it to a point. So, you know, not a biggie. You can even wipe it off if you get it. You're like, whoops, I just totally covered that flower. You can just wipe it off pretty much. It's not as much as of a resist as like regular wax or a wax crayon, but it, it's pretty good. There we go. How oh, mellow today. It's rainy. My son's Little League game has been canceled, which I'm a little relieved because he'll get to go to his Boy Scout meeting, which is nice. All right, so I'm going to put in some of this mauve, which is going to turn kind of brownish, but it's all part of my plan, my master plan. My plan of artsy goodness. I like to let it drip. That's how I roll. That is what a Lindsay do. That is how a frugal do. <laughs> watching, oh, my husband got me uh, <laughs> watching these true facts videos. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're hilarious. You just have to see them. <laughs> you probably have seen them. I think it's a pretty popular uh, YouTube channel. True facts about owls is, is pretty funny. True facts about Morgan Freeman is also pretty funny. All right. And there we go. I'm, I'm tipping it so that I can uh, make the paint run a little bit. But just remember, you don't want to overdo it with the water or your, your paper's going to buckle and it might even pill up on you and be nasty. So there, there it is. I think this is a fun, um, fun technique. Now I want to show you the original one again because sneaky, sneaky trick I did um, on the original one. Let me just move my watercolor palette out of the way. Now, oh, a couple tips. See how bright the watercolors look there and how muted they look here? Watercolor dries lighter. You've probably already figured that out. But in case you haven't, that's why the watercolor is going to dry like that. It's going to dry lighter. Now, if you look here and you say, hey, those colors are a lot darker, a lot more vivid. Why is that, Lindsay? Well, remember the daffodil? I don't know. Do you remember the, da the daffodil tutorial the other day? Or maybe earlier today? I don't know how I'm going to upload these because I don't want to overwhelm you with too much, Lindsay. Um, I did markers first on that one. And then I went over it with colored pencil. This one, I just did colored pencil. So you can look at that and decide what uh, technique you like the best. Maybe you want to do markers underneath everyone. Maybe you want to switch it around, but that just shows you one done with markers underneath and one done without markers underneath. Um, I think they both look fun, but it's just completely personal preference and up to you. I hope you like this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And if you really, really like the video, share it on Pinterest or Facebook or tweet it or whatever you do. Um, and as always, thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. And until next time, happy crafting.